What's up guys? So I get asked a lot, what do you do to race prep your bike? So I see a lot of morons out there that don't race prep their bike. If you're racing, you're on a bike, dirt bikes are dangerous, prep your bike. It's important. You know, you, you take care of your body or you should take care of your body. If you race a dirt bike, if your dirt bike is what you're on, take care of it. So I'm going to walk you through what I do to prep a bike. It's very just general stuff. I don't know how people don't think about these things, but we're going to go through it and to show you what I do. It's more simple than you think. So first thing we're going to do is start draining the oil. So on a Kawasaki 250, I don't know about the 450, 12 millimeter bolt. So, while the oil is draining, I'm going to go on to the next thing, so that way I can do two things at once. I'm going to start, I'm going to change my air filter. I never ride with a dirty filter. Always want to have a good, clean air filter. For anybody that knows, anybody that's worked on the new 20, 21 250 or 19 to 21 450, the Kawasaki has the worst air box ever designed. Performance is great, but changing your air filter is the most difficult thing you've ever done. So you can see my air filter definitely has some dirt on it. I know people that would still run that. They would say, oh, it's not too bad. I still want to use that or whatever. Get another ride out of it. No, don't run that. When you change your filters, especially on these, this is why I hate these things. They're super tight. Dirt was gonna get, will get down inside that air boot. So I like to clean around the filter so that way it's just less dirt that could end up in my air boot. So get the brake cleaner. Don't spray the filter directly because the brake cleaner can eat up the glue on the filter. You don't want to spray around it. Spray anywhere there's dirt that's not gonna be directly in contact with your filter. kind of a privateer tech tip. You want to save these gloves as much as possible, especially nowadays with the corona and everything. So to keep from having these multiple gloves, the dirty filter is still on the bike. So I'm going to oil the new filter so that my gloves are still clean. And I use I use the pour-on oil. It's not as thick once it dries up in the filter. And I use the mousse kind. It's just like twin air, but I get it cheaper, so I use this. So just pour this all over here and squeeze it around. Very difficult, I know. So, I'm gonna do that, get it all worked in. Then, I'm just gonna let this sit for a second while we get the other filter out, make sure our air filter cage is clean. There you go, our filter is oiled. Very difficult process, I know. Are you rolling? Oh. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna get the old filter out of here and we're gonna try and only dirty one glove if possible. It's one less glove you have to clean off after. So I like to use a paper towel to do this just to get a little bit of dirt on the paper towel inside your hand. It makes things a little bit easier. You can see how terrible this air box is. I don't know who at Kawasaki thought this made sense. I don't agree with that man. Or a woman. Maybe a woman designed it. I can see that. So we're gonna put that there. With your permission, and we're gonna talk to her. And you rip out the old filter. Try not to get your gloves dirty. As you can see, per usual, of the Kawasaki airbox, we got dirt all over inside there. There's no way around it. 
So you gotta come through here, wipe this out the best you can possibly wipe it out. Because you don't want dirt going into your intake. So we're gonna the cage back on our new clean oil filter. With clean oiled air filter. You know what I said? So it's back on here. All real nice like. Ready back in. I cleaned out all around and inside of the air boot. That's good to go there. Yes. Well, why don't you tell me? You can stare at me. <sighs> Alright, so I got the oil plug back in, the drain plug. When you put those back in, you always want to kind of wipe down that seat where the bolt seats up to the motor. You don't want any dirt. If there's a piece of dirt in there, it's not going to seat right. You might mess up the threads, you might mess up the seating. So, you don't want to do that. Wipe it down, make sure it's clean. When you tighten those things down, you want them tight. Don't strip them out. If you strip them out, that's not good. That's the bottom of your motor. You're screwed. So be easy with how tight. Just look at your torque specs and whatever your bike recommends. I, I kind of know where it's at, so I just go off feel. I've done it a bunch of times. So I'm not worried about it. But make sure that's seated. So now we're going to change our oil filter. I change my oil filter every other oil change normally. But for race days, I want all my stuff just ready to go brand new. So. If, it, if I was doing some practice and stuff, I'd do it every other oil change. But for a race, I'm making sure everything's 100%. Alright, so you get this out. Cowie has a spring on. Different bikes have different setups. Spring might be under their oil filter. Depends on the bike you're on. The Cowie, the oil filter is just about impossible to get out. So, what I found that works, if you get you some wire cutter, Make your little dent in it. Just pinch it like that. Pour oil all over the side of your bike. Look inside there, make sure you have no metal shavings. If you have metal shav shavings, you might have a problem. If it's aluminum, chances are it's coming from either your piston or your clutch basket. If it's steel, you probably got like a, a gear going out, a bearing going out maybe. So the different type of metal that you see in your if they're shavings will kind of tell you the different problems you might have. I don't have any problems, it's a brand new bike. So it's got 6.5 hours on it, even though it looks like it's got 400. So, put that in backwards. So 
So just like with the drain plug, whenever you put this down, you want to make sure that seat is clean. I looked at it, it was clean. And if there's any dirt or anything that would be caught up in there or even in the O-ring that goes around it, <clears throat> you're going to have oil leaking out of here. And like I had a little bit of oil spill out, so I'm going to wipe that oil up. So that way, if I do see oil there later, I'm going to know it's leaking, but it shouldn't leak. Just precautions. If you've got a Cowie, I would highly recommend getting a new mill plug because this thing is terrible. It's, I've already started to strip it out like my second or third oil change, so you gotta be super careful on these things to get them out. You gotta like hold the screwdriver in crooked, it's just it's a huge pain. I already broke it loose because I didn't want to fight with it on camera because that's too much work. So you get this thing out of there. And if you're a real spoon and you forget your stand at the house, you can use a bucket. I forgot my stand at the house. It was raining and we were trying to hurry because it was raining and it was like getting dark. So we we're in a hurry and forgot the stand. But no big deal, we got a bucket. So you get your oil, whatever oil you want to use. I'm not sponsored by VP. This is actually just some bucket I found. I normally run Yamalub actually, because it's cheap. But I had an extra bucket of this. So here we are, I already have it pre-measured to what I need to run. Pour right in. A lot of things when you see people like I'm kind of a bad example for it right now because I bought an exhaust before suspension but everybody thinks their bike needs to be faster to make them go faster you need to have a bike that rides good to ride the bike good and then if you need more speed you need more speed so like for me I bought an FMF but I've got suspension that's on the way everything is going on with that so I didn't buy the exhaust before I had the suspension I actually already purchased suspension it's on the way this is just happened to be able to get it sooner. Anyways, suspension is a huge thing when you're riding. If your suspension sucks, you're gonna suck. That's just how that works. So, something a lot of people don't even know you're supposed to do, <laughs> make sure it's clean. You're supposed to bleed your forks. Your forks build up pressure, and then you have these bleed screws on your forks. So you want your bike on a stand so the suspension is off the ground, and you wanna let the pressure out. That's literally all you do. If you don't do that, your bike is gonna feel very rigid. And it's just not gonna flow the way it needs to. I'm not a suspension technician, so I don't know the science of it. All I know is pressure builds up and that's not good. So you take these screws out, you put the screws in. It's literally that easy. And now your forks can work how they're supposed to work. Adjusting your chain is a huge thing that people, you see people that don't focus on your rule that focus on they do it wrong. So I'm giving you my way, which I'm pretty sure is the correct way. If anybody says I'm wrong, chances are they're wrong. So when you go to adjust your chain, different bikes I'm sure have different measurements on what the exact thing is. I go up three fingers roughly. So right behind the chain slide, three fingers and scab there. I know different people have different thickness of fingers, whatever. It's a good rule of thumb. They get you your wrench at 32. Break that loose. You don't need to take it all the way off. Break it loose and still hold it tight. Break it lock, lock that loose. Now you have to have this straight. If this is not straight, your tire is crooked. It's going to wear your chain is brought out faster. Also going to take away some performance because there's more tension. You don't want tension. And also could break your chain, could break your sprocket, could lead to a crash. You don't want that. So when you do this, you want these marks lined up perfect. You don't want them off in any way at all. So I'm going to just adjust this to where I think it's going to need to be. Check it. That's where I want it. So the back of my deal here is right behind the three, the third mark. So I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to just check the same thing.
that's dead on that's where i want it to be so i'm gonna roll this a lot of people have different opinions on it i put a wrench in here so when i pull it all it's doing is ensuring the axle is seated up against that bolt that's all that's doing i'm gonna tighten this back up and i'm gonna come back in i'm gonna loosen this that way it's tighter up against the axle and then tighten the lock nut into the swing arm it is that easy to adjust your chain i don't know why people skip this step it's a huge step could cause you to get hurt if you don't do it properly very easy something i see all the time people they don't check their gas you cannot get on the track if you don't have gas it has to be like like strapping up your helmet it's like putting clothes on before you leave your house. You have to have gas. Do not forget to put gas. It's like one of the biggest things. Everybody get on the track. Even if I know someone up for gas, I might pull me. I sit on the bike, check the gas just to be sure, just to double check. Because if you run out of gas on face of a jump, that's not good. Check your gas. Mine's already topped off. I'm good to go there. So next, check your other fluids. I've already put brand new oil in. I know my oil is full. So I'm going to check my coolant, make sure I'm good on coolant. Coolant's good. So I now know my gas is good, my oil is good, my coolant's good. All my fluids are good. And you just make a checklist. Go through your checklist, make sure everything is where it needs to be. So that way your bike is as best position it can be for you when you're on the track. And the, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do, make sure your tire pressures are set right. I'm not gonna check mine right now because my race is tomorrow. So air pressures change. You know, air temperature outside, hot air is gonna expand, cold air is gonna shrink. So if you check your air pressure the day before a race, and then you know nighttime gets colder, daytime comes around, starts getting hotter, the pressure of your tires can change. So don't check your tires and be like, oh I rode yesterday and they are good, they're probably still good. Not how that works. If your tires are off by half a pound, that's gonna change the way it's gonna feel on the track, whether you know it or not, whether you're advanced enough of a rider to realize or not, just because you don't realize it doesn't mean it's not actually affecting you. It just means you don't realize it. Alright, so check your tire pressure. I run mine at 13 front and rear. Depends on different um, tracks and where I'm at. Uh, if I'm running, if I'm going like arena cross stuff, I'm gonna do uh, 13 and a half pounds. I like a little bit more air. So it always depends on where, where you're at. Sand, hard pack, all makes a, a difference. 13 is kind of just like my general rule of thumb where I'm gonna go. So go through your bike, check your stuff. If your stuff's not set up, if it's not checked, it's not 100%, then you can't have confidence in your machine. If you can't have confidence in your machine, you can't have confidence in your ability on the track. So make sure your bike is always 100%, so that way you're the most set you can be, the most prepared you can be to have the best results on the track. Thank you guys. Let me know if you have any other suggestions on videos that you'd like to see me do, anything at all. I don't care, I can do it. We're trying to help build and grow the channel. So tell your friends, like, comment, share. Let me know anything y'all like to see. The bike's soon not gonna look like crap. I got black plastic on the way. Got graphics coming in. The bike's gonna be looking sweet. So I got a Vortex Ignition on the way and the header, but that's gonna be gone. So the bike's gonna be looking sweet, running sweet here pretty soon. Suspension's gonna be done by Evo in the near future. If you need suspension done, go see Evo. Tell them me, Grant Taylor, sent you, and he will hook you guys up. But as always, guys, thank you. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.